meeting, we're going to have a conversation on how we can work together as a community and as a city to improve outcomes for young adults age 16 to 24. Let's go take a look. Senior right now, and before I before I started applying, I would have liked to know how critical it was to meet the deadline. But for college, there are no second chances. It was the question what would I wish I had known in high school yeah. about college? About college I, I wish I would have known more about the financial aid process. The financial opportunities, yeah. scholarships, job needs of the area before you choose a major. Engage financial aid. The real financial burden of student loans. Um, start in kindergarten. How to manage my social life. The independence <laughs> that you gain when you go to college, that you've got to be pretty much responsible for getting things done. Nobody holds your hand. You've got to show up. Types of initiatives only work when we're all working together, when it's community, when it's our faith groups, when it's our public safety team, when it is our, uh, our prosecutor's office, when we're all working together, uh, we really can make a difference. Too often, a bad decision turns into a loss of life or a loss of livelihood, unless they have opportunities presented to them. And so today's conversation is really about opportunity. According to the last census in 2010, Young adults make up the largest segment of our population in Long Beach. Unemployment statistics from Pacific Gateway, the unemployment rate for folks that are 20 to 24 is 20.7 percent. That's almost triple the Long Beach unemployment rate. Young adults are also most susceptible to violent crime in Long Beach and represent a significantly disproportionate percentage of victims of violent crime. So Long Beach Police Department data tells us that since June, January 2014, 50% of all murders in the city of Long Beach occurred to victims aged 18 and 29. 43% of assault with a deadly weapon victims are between the age of 18 and 29. 38, so roughly 40% of all robbery victims are aged 18 to 29. And not so recent advances in developmental neurological science tell us that the brain isn't fully developed until someone's in their mid-20s. It's not 18, it's not 16, it's not 21 when you can drink, it's 25. The only people who really have this right are the rental car companies who charge you extra if you're under 25. On the other hand, the part of the brain that deals with pleasure seeking, reward seeking, um, that's fully developed. And so you have this gap between reward seeking behavior and the ability to sort of mitigate that through impulse control. All right, so essentially, young adults look like fully grown adults, they talk like fully grown adults, but they're like a car without a brake pedal. Right? It looks right from the outside, but that ability to sort of slow down isn't fully there. What we also know now through this science is that the period of adolescence and young adulthood is equally as important. That is, in fact, our last opportunity. When, when a young person steps into the courtroom and, and is in that waiting room, even in the waiting room, and it's sometimes a 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old, um, the, the type of experience that is is traumatic and the, the kind of um, influences that they're going to have if they continue down that path. Again, like Brent said, the, the brain is very malleable. So it could be positive, it could be negative, and it's our job to switch that net from sweeping young people up and, and criminalizing them to, um, to making it a wide net that puts them into mentoring programs. Is that those that are absent from school and they're in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade fall behind. 75% of chronic truants don't finish school. We also know that if you don't finish school, if you don't get a high school degree, how are you going to be competitive in the job market? The core issue, what is the root cause for this tension at school, for this for this young person misbehaving and escalating to that? Uh, before it used to be a trip to the principal's office and you know you would have a conversation, they'd call your parents and you would figure out what went wrong, how could that have been prevented, and there could be a consequence, but it was all in based in, in positive youth development. And now young people are going to court for these things in some cases. Here in Long Beach, I can say that we get it. We're working now, I think for the first time, in a collaborative way that's never been approached by any city, by having health department, police department, prosecutors, district attorneys, probation officials, having a wide range of folks with the leadership that we have in the city of Long Beach, with Robert Garcia, an education-focused mayor, with people like Rex, Rex Richardson who are leading the charge uh, in the city on the policy side, I believe we are uniquely situated to do something here in Long Beach that has not been done before. Having this conversation together in one room 
when we're here all listening to each other, realizing that we have a stake in it. Imagine if the chief of police was held accountable, at least partly, for graduation rates. What if the superintendent of the school district was held accountable, at least partly, for the youth crime rate in the community? What if prosecutors were held accountable and were measured not by the number of convictions they secure of 18 to 24 year olds, but how many 18 to 24 year olds are moved into mentoring programs, job uh, placement programs, job training programs, and actually come out better for what they had done. Right.